Hey folks, every now and again something crops up on the old E of Bay and it's one of those immediate pull the trigger moments. Today's video features just such a purchase in the form of this, the Ryzen 5 1400. Originally launched as the cheapest Ryzen 5 CPU back in 2017 at £165 and unlike the GoTo 1600 and 1600X which featured an Intel busting 6 core and 12 thread configuration, the Ryzen 5 1400 was a little bit more familiar and came with a core configuration of 4 cores and 8 threads along with 8MB of L3 cache. Out of the box the base clocks came in at 3.2GHz while the maximum single core boost was only 3.4GHz. Fast forward to 2018 and I picked up this chip along with a Wraith Stealth cooler for £59. Yes you heard correctly, £59, that's cheaper than the Ryzen 3 2200G by about 30% and pretty much the exact same price as a new Intel Pentium G5400 which is still a dual core chip with 4MB of L3 cache although that does clock in at 3.7GHz. Further to that, I've also just sold the Stealth Cooler on eBay for £11, meaning that this little 4 core, 8 thread CPU has cost me under £50. But is it a dog? I mean, it could be that this particular chip is just a silicon lottery loser, even capping out at the all core standard boost of 3.2GHz. So before I let my guard down and celebrate, let's clean it up, install it into a system and see how far we can push it. Now if you've been following the channel for a while, you're going to know that last year, even when unoptimised memory support was a thing and a young and buggy chipset was plaguing everybody, I was hugely impressed by the Ryzen 5 1400, I managed to get it to overclock to about 3.7GHz with not much trouble whatsoever, and while it did fall slightly short in multi-threaded applications compared to my own Ryzen 7 system, Pound for pound, it offered up a great bit of competition to Intel's Core i3 range, which at the time were still struggling along with two physical cores and four threads. So with the little 1400 cleaned up and installed into a system along with a Wraith Spire cooler, I can confirm that it is actually a 1400, so we're off to a good start. Booting into Windows at stock speeds and running Prime95 stress test provided no real test for the 1400, but it did give us a good baseline, with the all-core boost frequency stable at 3.2GHz while running a V-core value of 1.168V and returning a maximum temperature of 60 degrees. Now Prime95 is a great little tool for putting a heavy load on your CPU, maxing out usage and driving up temperatures to an unnatural level. So in day to day work or gaming loads, the load on the CPU is not going to be as consistently high as in the Prime95 stress test. But wanting to push things a little bit further, I started overclocking the 1400 manually and got the results we're going to see. Up to 3.7GHz was achievable and stable with the voltage being kept below 1.3V, as well as temperatures during the stress test maxing out about 70 degrees. Now I know these days 3.7GHz may not sound like a huge amount, but it does represent a really nice 15% boost in all core frequency over stock and most importantly it's free. This was also about the level that the Wraith Stealth cooler that it shipped with started to struggle, but with the Spire cooler and its larger heatsink there's still a little bit of room to push further. The max overclock I could manage for very short time periods with fans blazing was 3.9GHz at just over 1.4V, but it was hot and noisy and not something that I would want to use every day. 3.8GHz was achievable at just over 1.32V, but the temperatures were hovering in the low to mid 70s, nothing to be concerned about at all and it was rock solid, but at the same time that extra benefit of 100MHz over my really cool and stable 3.7GHz was just not really worth it in my setup, especially for the kind of cards I'll be testing it with. So overall, this is one eBay purchase that has been a bit of a bargain. Overclocking to 3.7GHz offers up a good combination of performance, reasonable voltage and temperatures. And as mentioned, at 3.7GHz but also 500MHz higher than the stock 4 core boost speed. So not too shabby at all. Now I'm sure some of you watching this might say it's never fair to compare old versus new prices and I usually completely agree. The problem here is that in terms of technology, this Ryzen 5 1400 is actually newer than the latest lineup of Pentium chips. Now we all know that AMD took Intel by surprise with Ryzen's launch, prompting the blue team to prematurely launch their HEDT platform, as well as pulling Coffee Lake's release date to late 2017. But other than a slight tweak in other already well established 40 nanometer architecture, Coffee Lake, especially in its non 6 core guise, is essentially just the same bunch of chips you could get back in 2015 when Skylake was originally launched, but with a new badge slapped on them. So, what it really boils down to here 
is a choice between a new semi-rebadged Core i3-6100 pretending to be a Pentium, or if you want to dive into the used market, you can get something like an i5-7400 for about double the price. Or you can go for a chip like this, which is less than a year old, features twice as many threads and twice the amount of L3 cache, while being easily overclocked to the same frequency for a lot less money. So there's only one of those options that would get my money every single time, without question. So it appears it's a great time to get onto the AM4 platform. With the release of the Ryzen 2000 series, it's meant that a gradual trickle of used first gen parts are starting to appear on the market. And if you were ever on the fence about taking the plunge, with bargains like what I've just found starting to crop up, it looks like AMD are not only causing Intel headaches when it comes to new prices, but they're also starting to cause them a bit of headaches on the used market too. But I want to know if any of you bargain hunters out there are starting to see Ryzen chips appear on the used market, and if the crazy price to performance ratios are tempting you to start your own AM4 based build, or if you've even already made the jump to the AM4 platform. I'll leave it there for today folks, and just say thanks for watching, remember to like, share and subscribe, as well as click that little bell icon to see more videos like this. And as always, I'll see you in the comments section down below, and in the next video.